Hey guys, I uh, wanted to make a quick and easy tutorial about how to model a low, mid, and high poly object and make down normal map information. Um, basically, the reason I wanted to make this tutorial is because I saw a lot of conventional methods out there for normal map baking and hard surface stuff that uh, in 3ds Max that was a bit more meticulous than it needed to be. Um, I uh, spent some time and found a workflow that uh, allows me to model all this stuff uh, extremely quickly. Um, and basically, I also wanted to help others who are trying to understand how to normal map bake avoid a lot of the confusion that winds winds up giving them like really bad um, texture seams and edge black lines and all sorts of other kerfuffles that we'd probably rather avoid. So let's get started here. Okay, so basically, I opened up a clean scene in uh, 3ds Max, and what I want to start doing first is I want to go to the top view, and I want to pull up the line tool or, or in the splines panel here and uh, I just want to make a basic um, you know hard surface object let's say it's a sci-fi cube of some kind you know nothing specific but I just basically want to experiment with some uh, hard lines and angle stuff so real quick I'm just gonna dot in some uh, points here and then turn off snapping and then so now I got a shape here now I can convert this to an edit poly so I got this one shape here and um, we can extrude but rather than extrude I want to preserve this bottom face down here so I would rather use a shell oh but real first let's make sure that um, these lines are connected properly because in order to have um, good subdivision these lines need to be connected smartly uh, they can't have tries or in gons or anything so like Real quick, let's just divide all this stuff up into uh, quads. So connect this guy to that. Um, connect that to that. And connect that to that. And looks like we might be getting a quad here. So why don't we just real quick fix that. And there we go. Cool. Awesome. So now it's all quads. Now let's shell this guy um, to give it some thickness. And there we go. Like I said, this isn't going to be anything specific. This is just uh, demonstrating basic hard surface stuff. Okay, so let's collapse all this down. So now it's a editable mesh. Actually, we want it to be an edit poly. So uh, now what we do, and this is an important step because this is going to help us um, unwrap, uh, un UV unwrap the object later. So basically, what I want to do is I want to select all this stuff and I want to auto smooth it. And as you can see, it gives me uh, some mostly uh, flat surfaces, but we uh, we need them to be completely flat. Notice how, like in some in some areas, it still has a bit of smoothing. So basically, what we do is we say Control A, select all the faces, and we lower the angle threshold at which it smooths all smooths all these faces. So let's bump it out to 20, and there we go. As you can see, now everything is its own flat face. However, it does still have different smoothing groups, and that's important because it has to read the smoothing groups in order to use a special technique in UV unwrapping called flatten by smoothing group, which is what I like to use. Speaking of, let's go ahead and do that now. Go to unwrap UVW, open the UV editor, uh, click off the checker because I hate the checker. It always makes it hard to see stuff. Um, select everything, or rather go to faces and then select everything and then go to flatten by smoothing group and there you go flattens everything out nicely um, and I mean it's pretty well packed I mean like obviously if we were going to do this properly we would want to spend a little bit of time packing this in you know a bit more efficiently to uh, really optimize how much texture space we get but right now it doesn't really matter so let's go ahead and collapse all that down so yeah that's our low poly that's how quick and simple we can make our low poly. Now, let's take it a step further. What we want to do now is we want to build our high poly model. This is going to be the model that's like got a little bit of edge smoothing and it's a bit more detailed and obviously it's too high poly to go into a game engine. So basically we want to normal map bake all the information from the high poly model to the low poly model. So in order to do that we got to set up our low poly to be subdivided first. Uh, so traditionally how do you would do that? And let's let's just put an edit poly on here so we can like have two versions of the same model. Um, traditionally how you would set up your uh, low poly for subdivision is you would use something like swift loop where you basically put an edge loop here, an edge loop here, 
here, here, and everywhere you want there to be like a hard, hard edge. Um, so basically, you spend all this time using Swift loops to back up all these corners and stuff, and then like in some cases you gotta like spend time adjusting individual verts or edges and stuff, you know, to like just make it more even or straight and stuff. But that takes a lot of time. Um, um, and and uh, what happens when you do all these edge loops, of course, is basically you create more geometry on the edges, which kind of uh, specifies where the subdivision is going to just have more detail. So if we say turbo smooth, obviously these corners are going to have more detail, and they will be preserved. Let's bump that up to two or three. There you go. See. Um, whereas everything else, if it doesn't have those uh, edge backups, then it's just going to be completely smoothed into mush. So um, yeah. But the thing is, that is the traditional way of doing it, but it's very time consuming. Here's a simpler and easier and faster way. Okay, so let's get rid of that edit poly. Uh, get rid of that one. These are tuber turbo smooth, and this is what the model looks like without any edge backups or uh, edge padding. Um, so let's click that off real quick. Edit poly. Let's create another edit poly because we want our low poly version to be um, preserved. Uh, so. In this edit poly, we're going to go to edge, and we're going to um, basically select all hard edges. Now, what I just did there is a special little uh, technique uh, that you can hotkey to your keyboard. In this case, I, I put it to the space bar, but basically what it does is it works a lot like uh, select by angle or smooth by angle in that it uses a certain angle threshold to determine like which edges are sharp. Um, and in this case it's using the threshold of 45 degrees. And you'll notice almost all of these are 45 degree angle. So yeah, so basically um, what you do is you go to customize user interface and let's see, uh, space, sharp edges. It's called sharp edges here in, um, in the uh, hotkey menu. So yeah, it's really useful. Um, especially when you're doing hard surface stuff. So now that we got all our hard surface edges selected, what we can do is we can chamfer all of these. So here's our tri-chamfer, but, and like that, that gets us, you know, part of the way there. As you can see, it gives us some nice uh, edge padding, which is good. However, what you can do to get um, a result similar to that, uh, all that time we spent swift looping is you can convert it to quad chamfer, you know, pull this out however much you want, and then down here you pull this all the way out and bam, you get nice even edge loops, just like how you would if you would spend all that time uh, using swift loop. And um, in, the, in this case we're going to want to select all of these hard surface edges so it's nice and even and doesn't create any tries because tries are the devil of, of uh, subdivision. Okay, so yeah, now that uh, we got all our stuff properly edge looped, turn on Turbo Smooth, and look how pretty that is. That's our high poly model, and that was really quick. Um, but real quick, let, let's step back so I can show you another cool advantage to working this way. Um, so, let's select all our stuff. And because we already have this Turbo Smooth modifier on here, and I bumped the Turbo Smooth iterations up to three just because that's what I prefer, um, we can click this on, the little flashlight to preview uh, the result, and then we still have all of our stuff selected, uh, all of our edges selected. So what we can do is we can chamfer them and turn that on and see the result for ourselves before we apply the changes. So we can adjust it on the fly. Um, and that's really useful in case you, you know, have a few different uh, changes that you want to, like, make before you apply all this. You want to adjust the smoothness or the curvature or whatever. So that's really useful to have all these mul all these modifiers open at any given time, um, you know, instead of collapsing them all uh, step by step. So I'd say that's pretty good for our high poly. All right. So now we have our mid poly, which is going to be optimized for high poly, but we still have our low poly. Why? Because our base low poly is still the same. We just added an edit poly modifier. So we have these two versions of the same object. So now we can take our high poly version, make a copy of that guy, um, and we can go back to here, take these mods off, and there's our low poly. We can 
So we close, we cloned that out, and uh, now we got our low poly. Now we're about ready to do normal bat bake. Um, so yeah, as I said before, we um, we already unwrapped our low poly model. Uh, so uh, the important thing here is that each of these faces that has a specific smoothing group are split off into their own separate UV islands. So like every single UV island is part of its own smoothing group because we fat flattened them by smoothing group and that's very important um, in a model like this because um, well why that's important is because normal maps really uh, they kinda have a problem with 90 degree angles so these 90 degree angles right here um, they uh, something has to be done about them otherwise you're gonna get a uh, get like a lot of really bad terrible um, normal map information, there's going to be this really weird harsh black edge here. Um, so in order to avoid that, what we do is we split off the UV shells so that the pixels don't like collide with each other and it's red weird in the normal map. So now that we've got that done, collapse that, um, collapse that, and let's just put both models in the exact same place. Let's change the color for this guy. Is this a little bit? Okay, and then let's name this low poly, LP for low poly, and HP for high poly. All right, now let's bake our normals. Okay, so with the low poly selected, we're going to hit zero for the render to texture dialog box, and we're going to say pick. What are we going to pick? The high poly, and it creates a cage, and then open up the cage, reset the cage, push it out a bit. Um, for the rays to scan the high poly properly. All right, now we're going to add normal map, and why don't we bump it up to maybe a 1024 map? Designate a location, downloads. Cool. All right, so now our normal map is going to show up in our downloads folder, and I'd say we're good to hit render. All right, so it's going to spit out a normal map. Let's collapse all that down and isolate the low poly and open up our material editor. Uh, we're going to have to plug in a normal map filter to the bump channel and then make sure that the bump map slot is up to 100. I don't know why Max puts it at 30 by default. It's weird. Let's open up our downloads. There's our normal map. Let's pop that in there. Connect it to the normal, make sure that that is checked off, and apply it to our object. And bam! There it is. Low poly object with normal map edge details. And uh, as you can see, it's got those nice smooth edges that you would see from a high poly object. Uh, but it is still a hard surface model. And so, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, I, I kind of took my time explaining some of the nuances of this process, but overall, uh, when I do this myself, it takes me around like less than 10 minutes to do all of this. Um, of course, it depends on the sophistication of your model, but the overall process, at least I believe, just takes a lot less time than, you know, swift looping everything by hand and like, you know, selecting individual faces and breaking them off in the UV channel. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps and speeds up people's workflow because it's a lot of, um, you know, time and pain that you shouldn't have to put yourself through. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching.